All right, folks, all of you digital performer users, I think you're gonna love this. And for anyone else who uses other audio workstations, and if you're doing sampling or anything else where you have a lot of repetitive work to do, this can totally help. Apple has a thing called Apple Script, which can operate like a user, basically. Anything you can do on your system, you can program and automate. So in this case, I have all these little things are teeny tiny regions. This happen to be note releases. So if I'm, um, sorry, I'm kind of trying to use two hands here. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that these are tiny, teeny tiny little audio regions there. And that's just the end of a note. I have tons of them. And what I need to do is name them all appropriately because if they're not named well, then uh, obviously you have no idea what's what. So this is highly repetitive and I wanna thank Brian Leach. He gave me the idea, leachstuff.com. He gave me the, stuff, the idea to use AppleScript to solve this problem. So check it out, Soundbytes window my sound bites are all named in a in a really not helpful way, right? But over here I have an Apple script, and so what I'm gonna do? Uh, flip over to my Apple script there, and run it. Now it's gonna ask me what's the sound bite prefix. In this case, I'm working on the direct input, and this happens to be a release sample. Done. I'm going to start, um, where am I starting? I'm starting an octave one. And I'm going to do six octaves worth of notes. Now here's a little trick. I have to option click the first soundbite that I want to rename inside the soundbites window within four seconds. So I just prepare for that. I'm going to hit enter over here and then select that. Now watch what's going to happen. It's now, without my help, renaming these things. And you see, as it's putting in, it's putting in the velocity layers that I need, because I, in this case, have five different velocity layers, with those specific note values where I want the software designers to cross from one velocity layer to the next in the final sampled instrument and then it's appending the correct note names to them. So suddenly I'm going to have note names that make a lot of sense. It first cycles through the octaves and then it cycles through the pitches and then it cycles through the velocities. It constructs the right file name and it does it for me, which is wonderful. So for the more geeky people among you, here's the script. It first sets the category. It's a list of all the note names that we're going to use. List of the velocities that I want to part that I'm I'm going to have. This is expandable. You can add as many or remove them or whatever. So if you just wanted to do half an octave and you had way more velocities, whatever, you can change that. These uh, give the input dialog you saw. This is uh, this is that warning, the four second warning flips over to DP. Now, cycle through the octaves, cycle through the pitches, cycle through the velocities, and set a couple of variables based on whatever state these loops happen to be in at the moment, current note and current velocity. All this stuff sort of assembles the file name. That's the prefix that I put in, makes a space, the V, the velocity, another space, and the note name. And then O, is the little variable I've used up here for octaves. So it just types those things. And then uh, this key code 125 is enter. That's the keypad enter and you see it, you know, pressing enter and moving on to the next item in the list. And then the loops end, that's it. And the end result here is absolutely wonderful because this would just take ages on its own. There is only one reason that this works, and that is that this sound bites list is in order. I've ordered them in my sequence, but that's not enough. They've uh, they've also been merged recently to um, to render all of the fades to audio because fades do not export. 
So I had to merge them all, and they were merged sequentially from left to right, and in this order, right? Starting with E, because that's this lowest note on this particular Fender Rhodes, and then they are in order from loudest velocity layer to quietest. So this list is already in that order, and the script just cycles through and adds the name. So to merge all of them, because I didn't do the work in order, that's another script from Brian Leach. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, he's created a script that will allow you to set your cursor somewhere, anywhere in your timeline, and just run the script. It will ask you how many sound bites you want to merge. In this case, it was about 350 per track that I was merging. And I have several different mic positions going, so it's quite a lot of files. And it just runs from left to right and merges them one at a time. So that is what created this sequence inside the Sound Bytes window, because I've sorted it by time created. And uh, so this will keep going for a while. It's not as fast as it could be. I would somehow imagine things to move a little faster. But still, this is way faster than I could do it on my own. So thank you, Brian. Much appreciated. Your script was an inspiration. And uh, this is not your script. This is something else. <laughs> but it was an excellent idea. And it's much appreciated. And all of you DP people out there, there are solutions where you can automate tasks. And they're not built into DP, they're built into the Mac operating system. If you go to Applications, Script Editor, you find it in there. So happy, happy working, all of you. <laughs>